Hello, viewers. Today, I'm reviewing fermentation books. So I have three substantial books about fermentation. Uh, and these are, these books, um, the topics in these books are wide ranging. These, uh, these cover a very wide scope, uh, fermenting almost, almost anything you can think of. Now, I'm going to judge these books very narrowly. I am going to judge these based on their mockley recipes. So, because that's, that's my channel. I'm not going to judge these on fermentation because, you know, of course, all of these authors know a lot more about fermentation than I do. And, uh, they all talk about Kochi. They, they know a lot more about Kochi than I do. But, uh, since my channel is, uh, about rustic Asian rice wine, I'm going to judge them based on their rice wine recipes. And specifically, I'm going to judge them based on their Mockley recipes. So uh, I do have links to these books in the description. They're Amazon affiliate links. So uh, I earn when these links are, are used. So, uh, okay. But let's get into the harsh judgment of of these books. What kind of Mockley recipes can I find in these, uh, in these, uh, best selling fermentation books? So let's start. Let's start with the Noma Guide to Fermentation. And, uh, authors are, uh, Red Thapey and Zilber. Noma Guide to Fermentation, um, this is a this is from a restaurant that uh, apparently specializes in in uh, fermented products, and uh, the idea is uh, seems to be, you know, the more technical molecular gastronomy kind of of cooking. So it has very specific recipes and uh, all kinds of. Uh, take a look at the uh, table contents. There are. Uh, you know, there's a lot of advice for for uh, fermenting so many kinds of things and for, and for making koji. Um, so I'm, I'm sure this advice is good. I should uh, I should follow it. But there's a there's absolutely no alcohol in this. So there's no rice wine. So there's a so I have to rate this a zero just because there's no mockley recipe in this entire book. It's supposed to be a guide to fermentation. It covers lots of fermentation, uh, inspired by many different cultures, but there's no, there's no rice wine in this book. So this is a zero, zero out of five. It could be a good book if you're interested in the other topics, but not for Mockley. The next book I want to talk about is this one, Koji Alchemy. Nice title, uh, Rediscovering the Magic of Mold-Based Fermentation. So, of course, this is, you know, New Rook is made by mold. This is a essential property. And this is, uh, of course, this focuses on koji. And uh, so in some ways, this is a bit more specialized. But there, there's a lot of things you can do with koji, it turns out. And the authors are She and Umansky. Let's look at... Uh, at their Mockley recipe. Um, now, starts off, uh, oops, I look, 500 grams of cooked rice, 500 grams of water, seems normal, one to one ratio. Uh, oh, and then it says 500 grams of new rook, so one to one rice to new rook ratio. That is very strange. That is very strange. It also has a sweet potato. Uh, why does it have a sweet potato? I don't know, but, uh, this is a very strange recipe. So much Nuruk and, uh, reading the directions, um, it gives no directions for filtering it at all. It just says it's unfiltered. I don't think you can follow this recipe and make Makali. I think if you try to follow what's written here, you're not going to be happy, uh, I don't know if this is just some kind of typo 
I hope they can try out their recipe and refine it and make the directions make sense. And the thing is, just on the previous page, there's a there's a recipe for uh, a rice wine using a Chinese yeast ball, and it uses one one yeast ball for four liters of cooked rice. Now, so that ratio is, you know, I think the smallest amount of enzyme you could use for that rice. Okay, one yeast ball. And then just on the next page, they're using a one-to-one -one ratio of, of rice to Naruk. So that's crazy. Uh, I think, uh, I think this is a poor Makali recipe. I don't like it. This gets, but they do mention Makali. So it gets one out of five rating from me. Um, no. Like I said, these authors know so much more about fermenting and koji than I do, but uh, I don't think they're, uh, I don't think they've brewed a lot of Makali, at least not from this recipe. And the third book I want to talk about is this, The Art of Fermentation. This is a, this is some kind of classic fermentation book. Author is Sandor Alex Katz and the very wide coverage. And it really describes a lot of the philosophy of, uh, and the science behind fermentation. And a lot of the concepts are, are, are about how uh, these microbes are, are we're co-evolving with these microbes, doing things that are mutually beneficial. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it, is, it is fascinating to read about all the different kinds of things you can ferment. And the instructions are often pretty general, trying to get the principles, but not a lot of specific quantities. Sometimes just the ratios, but it's not like a recipe book with a whole list of specific quantities, you know, to the to the gram. It's not that kind of book. So that that's probably a good philosophy to to use when you're fermenting all these all these different things. And this this book does have a mockley recipe in it. So, uh, but like I said, I am going to judge this narrowly. How is the Mockley recipe in this book? So it does give some generic advice for rice beer, uh, seems reasonable, and talks about some of the common things with Asian rice wine, that, and uh, interesting. And then the, the Mockley recipe, it's a sweet potato Mockley again. Big question, what's the deal with the sweet potatoes? Why... In fact, the the uh, Koji Alchemy recipe seems to have used a sweet potato just because there's a sweet potato recipe in this book. A good thing about the art of fermentation is that there are uh, references. You can tell where the recipes came from. And for uh, for this uh, for this sweet potato makali recipe, and he got this recipe from a blog. And he's not he's not saying he's a he's a makali brewing expert. He's just saying you know where he got the recipe from and what what he tried. And uh, he's obviously an experimenter. He tries different things, but. Uh, why is it always a sweet potato makali in these books? I don't think that's, that's not the first kind of makali that was made. It's not even the standard kind uh, anywhere as far, as far as I know. It is very strange that why, why sweet potato? Why do two of these three books have a sweet potato makali recipe and they don't have a regular makali recipe? I, I don't, I don't know. It might just be, uh, might just be an accident based on the uh, transmission of uh, of recipes from this from this blog, but uh, let's uh, let's look at the actual recipe. So it's a kilogram of sweet rice, and instructions are pretty normal um, except for the sweet potato, and it's two liters of water. So let's see if this is a wet recipe, and it does not uh, specify the amount of nuruk at all. So you're on your own trying to figure figure out how much nuruk to to use with that one kilogram of rice. It does not does not specify. Uh, and the the instructions are are better how to stir it, how to uh, how to strain it at the end, and uh, and so the, the the rest of the recipe is completely reasonable. Um, so I think this is a reasonable recipe. It's not promising too much. It's also not 
I don't think it's actually specific enough for someone to follow. People will want to know the ratio of Nuru to, to rice that they should be using. So uh, that that is, they it's underspecified, so it's not wrong. I can't say it's wrong, but uh, it is underspecified, this, this recipe. Um, so the thing I like about this book is it has the spirit of experimentation and uh, the you know the the right references and the science behind fermentation and including including alcohol and uh, that is super useful getting understanding those concepts. I enjoyed learning more about those about those concepts and the philosophy behind fermentation. The deficiency is that the scope is so wide. Uh, on a particular thing like Mockley, where he's not an expert, uh, it's just not going to be the best recipe and it's sort of a sort of a fringe, weird recipe to put in that it has to have sweet potatoes. I don't know. But I do appreciate the effort and uh, I'll give this a, a three out of five for that for that Mockley recipe recipe. It is uh, it is underspecified. So three out of five for the art of fermentation, judging in terms of Mockley recipe. So the fermentation books weren't that great for Mockley recipes. Uh, where can you find a Mockley recipe in English? Well, you can look in Mongchi's cookbook, and uh, this does have a Yakju and a Mockley recipe in it. It's better than the YouTube version of of, uh, of her recipe. The, this steams the rice and cools it in the air and also with water. Um, it's it seems spot on and it's very specific. It has the uh, specific amounts of ingredients. You can follow this and I'm sure you'll have uh, a good end product. So uh, in the end, uh, Monchi wins this this battle of the cookbooks. Now just reading the recipe, her recipe is by far the best. So I'll give it a five out of five. It outshines the the other books. And uh, and she did revise it from the uh, from the YouTube version. So uh, so she she gets full points for her Mockley recipe. So if you've read any book in English that has a good Mockley recipe in it. Please, uh, please let me know. I, I am very curious. Uh, I don't think there's a lot out there, but I haven't seen everything. I want to be proven wrong. Please, uh, please let me know in the comments about any, uh, any Mockley recipe in English that you have seen. So after all that judgment, I think I need a cup of Mockley. Thank you for watching. <laughs>